Lord, that you would uh, just minister to our hearts, Father. Lord, to, to help us to, to know even more how great you are and how greatly that you love us, Father. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, my little first thing was working there. Give us a try. I've got the uh, uh, projector tied to my um, uh, try, tied to our screen to see if we can scroll through the scriptures uh, that way. And looks like it's working. All right, good deal. That's good to know. <laughs> Well, all right, this, uh, this evening, I uh, wanted to pick back up on our message from Sunday, uh, talking about our faith. And uh, the question I asked uh, Sunday was, that, uh, uh, is how it is that we can increase our faith. And the, a lot of times, uh, some folks look at this uh, differently, and... Um, uh, I've even heard it asked before, um, you know, should we ask for an increase of faith? Uh, before we get started, I wanted to start out actually in the, the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17. And um, I want to read a few verses there. It's kind of jumping uh, out of uh, the original study, but I just felt like it was a good place for us to start when it comes to this question about increasing our faith. So in Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 1, it says, um, uh, One day Jesus said to his disciples, There will always be temptations to sin, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? It said it would be better to be thrown into a sea with a millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. So watch yourselves. This is where I want us to hang on to it here. It says, If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. So if somebody does something against you and you say, hey, that was wrong what you did, and they're convicted and they say, you're right, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. The Bible says that we are to forgive. But it goes a step further there. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, you must forgive. I'm not talking about once a day, seven days a week. I'm talking about seven times in one day. So, somebody messes you up <laughs> seven times in one day. Um, how easy is it going to be to be like, okay, I forgive you. And to truly have a spirit of forgiveness for that person. Not seven times. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, what? Well, we're supposed to, so I guess yeah, we need to. Yeah, we yeah. need to. But uh, whenever circumstances like this, that's one of those circumstances where we say, Lord, help me. <laughs> right? Right? Uh -huh. Somebody tells you, it's like, you need to forgive that person for every time. It's like, whoo, Lord, help me. Well, in a, in a different uh, time, that phrase was a little different. Let's see how the disciples respond to this. Um. So reading again, it says, if another believer sins, rebuke that person, and if there's repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times, and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, you must forgive. And listen to what the apostles say. The apostles said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. In short, Lord help, it. Lord help me. Right? That's what they're asking. Is... God, you are asking us something 
to do something that is just beyond our capability and our faith to be able to do. So their response to that is, we need an increase of faith in order to make that happen, to make what seems impossible possible. So that's what I wanted to talk about uh, this um, is kind of in regards to what they have. Uh, there's sometimes where we may have been in circumstances and, and we feel like we need God to increase our faith to help us through whatever it is that we're going through or help us to, to decide to do or, or say what we need to do in uh, whatever circumstance that we're in. So that question, how can I increase my faith? So there's a couple of, uh, it's a little different angle of what I would like to, to look at this. And, and it's, there's a lot more to this faith than it is just asking for God for more faith. Believing that God says, ask and it shall be given to you. And then you go to bed at night while you're sleeping, some magical uh, faith dust gets sprinkled over you. And all of a sudden you wake up in the morning full of faith and ready to do anything that, uh, that comes your way. Um, but it should be a desire for all of our Christians to, to have more faith or to have our faith increased. Um, but one of the things I want to say from the very beginning of this is that uh, when it comes to having our faith increased or being able to do anything, it does not come from our own attempts or our own ability. We need to have that understanding right now. It is not anything that we do ourselves because uh, anything that I try to do, I almost always mess it up. I almost always fail at it. Um, and that's where we take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 7, uh, verse 7 here. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou dost not receive? What do you have that hasn't been given to you? Is there anything that you have that has not been, that you have received from someone or somewhere? That's what it's saying here. Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? What do you have that God hasn't given you? What do you have that God hasn't given you? So that raises this thought that if, if all you have is from God, how is it that we can ever boast that we've accomplished anything, that we have anything of our own? You know, that somebody says, I have worked on my faith, that I have uh, built my faith up to where I'm such and such type of Christian. Well, did they create that faith or was that faith given to them? Did they receive that faith? Without God, we're left to our, our own ways and our own resources. And those things are just riddled with, uh, with all kinds of issues. Uh, there's, there's pride. A lot of times there may be a stubbornness or uh, some kind of insensitivity. Uh, just many different things to just leads to, to failures uh, when it comes to our own devices. So the only way that we can count on, uh, the only one who we can count on that will not fail us is God himself. Right. In Hebrews 13, 5, it tells us uh, that let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. And one of the things that it says here is, uh, and be content with such things as you have. So whatever you do have, even if it's uh, faith, that it's fine for us to have that desire to, to have more faith, but we should still be content with the faith that we have, believing that the faith that God has given us is sufficient for what he has for us. Um, faith in God, it does require us to be involved and to immerse ourselves in his word. In um, uh, Romans 10, 17 here, it tells us, So then faith cometh 
by hearing. And what is it that we hear that brings about that faith? It tells us there. And hearing by the word of God. So our faith comes when we hear the word of God. When we receive the word of God. Whether it be spoken to us or whether we read it in God's word. Also in 1 Peter 2.2 2, it tells us, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. But what is it that we grow in? Two main things that comes to mind there is our, we grow in our relationship, but we also grow in our faith. Because it just told us previously that our uh, faith comes by hearing and receiving the word of God. So that's why we're encouraged there to, um, to desire the word. Because that's what brings about faith. Um, but another important part of that is that out of that word, one of the important things that comes from that is a learning of God's love, God's justice, God's mercy, God's plan for us. We learn to know not only who God is, but we get to know Him. There's a big difference in knowing who somebody is and knowing them. There's a big difference there. But the first part of that is, uh, is knowing who somebody is. And then out of that comes a growing in that relationship where you actually come to, to know somebody. But it's important that we form a relationship with the Lord so that we can know Him personally, so that we can know God personally through Jesus Christ. It's one of the main reasons that God sent Jesus to us, that we may know our Father God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And that's why in John 17, 3, it uh, tells us, And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So whenever we come to, to know God, there is a uh, change uh, to, that happens in us. Uh, we should ask God to reveal more of himself to us, but as he does that, it causes a change in us. Uh, the closer you are in your relationship with God, the more that it is going to change you. You cannot encounter God and there not be a change. Like what uh, Pastor Dwayne used to say all the time. You could not have an encounter with a Mack truck on the highway <laughs> and not be changed by it, right? <laughs> well, well, God's much greater than running into a, a Mack truck. But there, there would be a change there. Uh, and the Bible has that promise for us that in uh, Matthew 7, 7, it uh, promises that if we seek him, that we shall find him. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. So if we allow God to, he will transform us into a new people, new persons, or a new creature that it says in the Bible. And in this newness, this newness of heart, this renewed mind, we can understand and we can comprehend the things of God. And one of the most important things that we comprehend is God's will for us. Uh, Romans 12, uh, verse 2 says, says, Be not conformed to this world, but ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. But in order for that change to happen, we have to be willing to be what the Bible calls uh, a living sacrifice. Uh, we see it uh, in the Bible where it talks about dying daily. We have to be willing to die off to our own selves, and our own desires, our own wants and wishes for our own life, and let go of the pride and the selfishness that a lot of times gets 
in the way. And I remember when I was young, in comparison to other people, um, I thought I was a, a pretty humble little kid. That I wasn't very selfish. And maybe I wasn't as outwardly selfish as some other people. But I learned as I got older that um, I am just as prone to allow selfishness to get in my way. I'm just more reserved about it. I'm not so blatant about my selfishness sometimes. And I think if we're honest about it, a lot of us, if we really uh, examine ourselves, that we have times where we allow selfishness to, to interfere with, um, with how we act and respond to things. And it affects our relationship with the Lord. Um, God, uh, He does change us and um, that change comes when we learn to, when, when that change comes, we learn to develop that fruit that comes from God's Holy Spirit. And that fruit um, uh, manifests itself uh, as the, the power of God's Holy Spirit it dwells in us. In Galatians uh, 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. And uh, also I added John 14, 17 here. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And the reason I say these things is because it is important that we walk in the Spirit. And that walking in the Spirit comes as a result of walking in relationship with the Lord. And I'll go ahead, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I, I, I think this is a good point to, uh, or this is a good spot uh, to make a very important point. A lot of people focus on the results. They, they try to make um, the results of what's most important the most important thing. When it comes to focusing in on faith and walking in the Spirit and and all of these other things, they are results from what is the most important thing. And that is our relationship with the Lord. If we focus on that, then, just as the Bible says, all these things will be added unto us. God gives us um, portions, rations, so to speak, of gifts that he wants us to have. Faith is one of those gifts that he gives us. And we'll see that. Um, but as we walk in relationship with the Lord and as we walk in the Spirit and we allow the Lord to control our lives, we will begin to trust him more. Because as the Lord leads and directs us, he will direct us into places that we wouldn't normally go. Um, that whole... You know, willingness to walk through that open, walk through that door when it opens up. But whenever we um, walk in the Spirit and we have that boldness and that courage to walk where the Spirit leads us, then it takes us on to, to new things, uh, uh, seemingly impossible things sometimes. It really demonstrates and testifies the goodness and the power of our, of our, of our Lord. Uh, in relation to uh, Colossians uh, chapter 2 and verse 7, it says, Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding wherein with thanksgiving. I want to share this in a different translation that uh, may help to, to understand a little bit. The NLT says it this way. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him. And I like that. How do we let our roots grow deep in him? That, that nourishment from being rooted in Christ can nourish us. It's back to what I just mentioned. It's about 
relationship. The more we draw closer in relationship, the more we uh, sink our roots into his life and the life of Christ, it nourishes us. Um, but again, let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him so you will grow in faith, strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Let your lives overflow with thanksgiving for all he has done. So if our trust in God is going to grow, we have to learn how to step out in faith and when we do, oftentimes it moves us out of our comfort zone and causes us to take chances and to take risks in the name of trusting the Lord. And whenever we do that, it allows God the opportunities to show us just how faithful He is. And when, the more we realize how faithful He is and to His promises and to us, then the more faith that we have in the Lord. Sometimes we may refuse to do that. Sometimes the Lord doesn't give us a choice. <laughs> he puts us in circumstances where we have to walk where we don't want to walk. We have to go through things we don't want to go. But I know in my life, the things that I have walked through that I sure didn't want to at the time, I have a great appreciation for because it has done that, it has proven that the Lord is faithful. And it has brought me to a point to where, uh, out of uh, desperation sometimes, I draw closer to the Lord. He'd rather be out of a loving desire, but you know, it's just like a little child that you know gets hurt or gets into a circumstance, they come running to, to mom or daddy, you know, and they draw closer to him at those times. Um, but when we do that, one way or the other, it brings us into circumstances where it uh, helps us to increase our faith. But if we believe that God will provide and perfect for us for that day, it gives us liberty. It gives us freedom to do what God has called us to do that day. It gives us the freedom to do God's will in that day, no matter what it is that we may face that day. And it also helps us whenever temptations come that we know that God will provide a way that we won't be overcome by those temptations. Uh, I'll share with you 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. So there's nothing that you would have to deal with that somebody else in this world at some time hadn't already done. There's a, it's like, oh, nobody understands what I'm going through. Well, somebody somewhere has faced uh, what you face. The Bible talks about there being nothing new under the sun. Uh, <clears throat> but it does go on to say that God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So we need, <clears throat> we need to look for that way out and uh, pray that God would show us that way out of the temptation. And when we endure and we make it out of it, we should praise God when, when we do find that. We see in 1 Peter 1, 7 that, uh, that God, just as I mentioned a second ago, that He will use trials to test our faith and to make us stronger Christians. Um, we'll be given much, uh, much more honor if we can stand strong and waver and, and not waver in those circumstances. Um, I had uh, 1 Peter uh, 1 7, but I, I see that I had actually copied the, the wrong thing on the notes there. So let me go to 1 Peter 1 7 and read that to you real quick. So 1 Peter 1 7 says, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. And again, I have. An appreciation for that because I know there's times where I was kind of again uh, arrogant and prideful thinking I'm a man of faith walking with my chest out you know like you know I'm, I'm a man of faith I, I, my faith is strong in the Lord and then some little something come around and it's kind of like a slap in the face and like hmm you're 
faith isn't quite as uh, strong as, as what you were proclaiming it to be. Uh, but these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. That your faith is far more precious than mere gold. And it goes along to that uh, analogy you've heard from Pastor enough. Uh, shared several times myself is how it is those trials that, that, that try our faith and helps us to purify that faith and to make it more genuine. Um, and again, uh, in Romans uh, 10, 17, uh, faith comes from listening to the message of the good news, and that good news is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So when it, we talk about our faith and wanting to have faith, there's one important thing. A lot of people, um, they'll try to read books or do many things to try to be, they try in their own effort to be more faithful. But there's something that the Lord had, uh, had told me some time ago, and this is what I share with you, is that faith both begins and it follows relationship. How did your relationship with, uh, with God start? It started when you took a step of faith. And, uh, and that faith was given to you. And you received that faith. And you believed in faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that opened up that doorway to begin that relationship. And the more that you grow in that relationship, the more faith will follow you in a relationship, excuse me. So if you, um, if you want to perfect your faith, then work on perfecting your relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. A perfect relationship with God, uh, focus on your, having a perfect relationship with God, and God will perfect your faith in Him. But even with saying that, just like uh, we saw the apostles, they asked for a crease of faith. But sometimes we look at that wrong and we think that we need more faith that it has to do with the amount of faith that you have. And this may sound strange, but more faith is not always better. More faith is not always better. In... Um, Romans 12, 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So somebody may think, how could it ever be bad to have more faith or to have all the faith that you can give or, or it's not possible to have too much faith. Well, I know for me personally, if I had more faith in what God had intended me to have, and I'd mentioned I'd already been that way, that I would walk out with my chest stuck out and kind of proud of the faith that I would have. And I thank God for the, the times that God has uh, come in my life and <laughs> gave me a faith check. To put me back in my place. To bring back a, a little humility. A little humbleness there. But one thing I want to point out in the Romans 12, 13. Is at the very end of it there. It says. Um, According as God hath dealt to every man. The measure of faith. So there is a measure of faith. That God has for each and every believer. When the faith that he wants you to have may not be the exact same amount of faith that I have. It may vary there. But also add to that Ephesians 4, 7, it goes along the same lines. It says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So there is um, um, a measure of each gift that God gives us. And faith is one of those gifts that he gives us. 
So in uh, coming up here, there's a couple other thoughts that came to mind that I wanted to share with you in regards to this. Uh, so it started out uh, taking a look at Luke uh, chapter 17. And uh, when we read those verses, let me go back to it real quick here. Luke 17 verse 1. Uh-oh. My Bible decided to change uh, translations on me. All right, so Luke 17 and verse 1. So in verse, or actually in verse 5, it, it, we hit that point where the apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. And this thought, uh, or this uh, scripture in verse 6 came to mind here, and, and God showed me a little bit more in regards to our faith and, and, and having our faith increased. The Lord answered, if you have faith even as small as a mustard seed, or actually the, the King James says as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, or what it's uh, in uh, it, during those times it's called a sycamine tree, or what we know as a sycamore tree. Uh, but it says here, mulberry tree, uh, may you be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. So again, now this request for increase of faith come after God had said, if somebody does you wrong seven times in a day and they come asking forgiveness that you should forgive them. And just like I mentioned, it's like us asking the Lord help me. You know, God, you know, God, I need you to help me with this because I can't do this on my own. They were asking for that increase of faith. But then he gives this analogy about faith. Now what does this have to do with them asking for an increase of faith? And when it talks about the faith of the mustard seed, one of the things that really comes to mind here is a mustard seed, it is a very small seed. Most all seeds are small in comparison to the tree, right? But man, there is so much life in that little seed. Because most any other tree, it's just amazing to see what can come out of a seed. That's like when I look at an acorn. Ooh, man, look at the size of a tree that can come out of a little uh, acorn. And so it's not so much the size of it, but it is the amount of life and the potential that that little seed has. And that's what we need to understand about our faith is it's not so much how much we have, but the quality, the life, and the potential of that faith that we have. And I mentioned before, in, uh, he, I think it was Sunday, in Hebrews uh, chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the important thing is, is that substance. If your faith is in the wrong, if, if, if your trust and your belief is in the wrong substance, then that faith is no good. Your faith is only good when it is grounded in God. Any other faith outside of faith in God is what I would call a dead faith. A useless faith. An ineffective faith. Uh, so it's not about having more faith, but having the right faith. Faith, uh, as I mentioned in any other, it is a dead faith. So, having a dead faith rather than a living faith, I think that's what happens sometimes. People don't truly have their faith in the right substance. They don't have their faith rooted and grounded in God. So they have a, a dead faith. They may have some faith in God, but a lot of times people try to uh, have like a, a Sunday buffet of faith. You know, there's, there's a little God in my faith plate. There's a, a little bit of money in my faith plate. You know, we, we want to pile up several different things uh, in our little faith plate. But, again, it's the quality of faith we have in the right substance. And that is in God. That is in the Lord. So what happens is, is I think people have a dead faith 
And instead of having a living faith that is full, even though it may be small, it's um, living and full of potential, they ask for more of the faith that they have that's dead. And that will get you nowhere. And when it talks about having the ability to uproot uh, this mulberry tree or this sycamine tree, well, you know, we, I don't, have y'all ever pulled up a little tree before? I mean, I've cut down and pulled up trees and, you know, dug, you know, cut roots out of the ground and, and cut stumps out of the ground. And, you know, it's, it's a task, but, you know, so what, what's the big deal? What's the uniqueness here when he's talking about being able to uproot a mulberry or the sycamine tree? And a couple of things I wanted to share with you that I think has great relevance to our life today is that if you look into what a sycamine tree is, uh, it is a tree that has a huge root system. And not only is that root system huge, but it has a tendency to go down and to wrap itself around and intertwine itself, not only with other roots, you know. It's like, have you ever, like, grabbed a hold of somebody by the arms and tried to hold on to them? But then have you actually, like, wrapped your arms around somebody and intertwined and locked your arms together? It's much more solid. It's a much better grip when you're intertwined and locked into them versus just hanging on to them. Well, that's kind of like these sycamine trees. Not only do those roots go down into the ground, but they go down into the ground and they lock in together in that ground. And they also run out and anything else that's around, they will intertwine and lock on to that also. So the root system is so huge and it digs in and intertwines so much that it is, once it's planted, once it's started to grow and those roots have, have sunk in like that, if it's a tree of any age, it's nearly impossible to fully remove that tree. So these are some hardy, robust trees. I think if you look into it, these trees can live up to 600 years. So I can, I can only imagine this tree that has this huge root system and um, for living for 600 years. I know on the, the, back in the pastures where my father lived, we had a, a bunch of old oak trees that you know might have been pushing upwards of 100 years old. And we did have a tornado that knocked some of them down. And to see whenever they did fall over, just the huge amount of earth that, that came out with those. I can only imagine a tree that has an even greater root system and living for 600 years, what kind of, you know, how seeded that would be in. But the thing about it is, is that kind of is like um, problems we have in our lives sometimes. They're like those sycamore trees. Or things that we face uh, in our daily lives might be like those sycamore trees. They may just seem impossible to move. And God is saying, what seems impossible is possible if only we have a bit of the right faith. So we just need to have a good quality faith. We need to have a, fa a faith that is living and full of potential. And, it's in, and that faith is in the right substance. And that is in God. So it's not how much you faith you have, but it's just having faith in God. And that is enough to, to do something um, that seems impossible, like uprooting this tree, just speaking to this tree that most would say is impossible to uproot, but, but just speaking to it and telling it to, to move. We see it also in another part in the Bible where it says faith, uh, this same type of faith, is able to move mountains. Uh, I had tried to move a mountain, but I would feel like, you know, just looking at that mountain is like, are you crazy? <laughs> There's no way. But if God said it, there is a way. If it is part of God's will, 
and we have that kind of faith, nothing is impossible with God. And so many things are possible if we just have the right amount or we just have the right faith in God. Not so much as how much, but we have the right faith. So again, just like the, the apostles, they made it a priority that they felt the need to have more faith to be able to do things for God. To be able to forgive like God told them to do. But it's not so much needing more faith. We just need to have that right faith in God. And that kind of faith comes, once again, from our relationship with God. Not only knowing about God, but knowing God. It starts with knowing about God, and we come to know God through His Word. And that's why it tells us that faith comes by hearing. Because the more we hear the Word of God, the come we know who God is. And it brings us to the place to where we can know God. So Wayne, if I'd never met you before and I wanted to know you, I would first need to know a few things about you, right? I'd need to know where you live, right? And need to know when you would be home, maybe. There's a few different things I would need to know about you uh, to try to get to, to know you. And it's the same thing with, Lord, with, uh, with God. The Word gives us the ability to know more about God, but then we take what we know about God and the Holy Spirit uh, who leads us and guides us into all truth and righteousness, and it brings us to a place where we can have that relationship with God. It is the Spirit of God that speaks the things of God to us. It is that communication line to God. So we know about God through His Word, and then the Holy Spirit helps us also to know God. And the more we know God, the more God knows uh, us, the closer we are in relationship, and the more these other things like faith uh, come unto us. Uh, just like it says in the Bible, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So now, let's not prioritize having more faith or having more gifts or, or all these other things. Let's make our relationship with the Lord priority number one. And He will give the measure that He has intended for us to have of all these other gifts. Faith being one of them. Amen. 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 Uh, anybody have anything they want to and before we close tonight. Uh, I did have a special request, and we'll uh, lift them up in, in prayer as we close tonight. Um, but uh, I believe uh, Parsons uh, been having some struggles and having some hardships. And I don't know the details of actually what's going on, what all's going on there, but uh, we just uh, feel the need to, to lift him up and uh, intercede for him in, in prayer tonight. Uh, also, Hope, I think Pam said that uh, she's still struggling with, uh, what was it, her gallbladder, right? Gallstones. Gallstones. Okay. She said it's Yeah, she does. Okay. Said she got her on some other medicine. She's doing a little bit better, but she's still having a hard time with it all, so. Anything else? All right, let's go Lord and pray. Great Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, understanding from your word today. Lord, we thank you for helping us to have a greater understanding uh, about faith and um, uh, the importance of not just so much how much faith we have, but having a true faith, a living faith in you, our one true and living God. And Father, thank you for helping us to understand, Lord, how it's not just faith itself, but it is our relationship with you, Lord, that spurs our faith. So, Lord, I just pray that you would help us, Lord, to lay um, any other priorities in our life aside, Lord, and look to you and 
look to our relationship with you as our highest priority in our lives. Lord, that we may be living sacrifices, Lord, sacrificing and laying down any other thing that may interfere with that, Father. That, Lord, that we would know you. We would know how much you love us. We would know how much you care for us. Lord, we know how much you are there for us and you are there with us every single minute of every day. Lord, and in knowing that, Father, Lord, that we can walk by faith. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful gifts that you so freely give us, and faith being one of them. Thank you for helping us to understand, Father, Lord, that the, uh, you have so graciously in your perfect will for all of us given us the grace and the faith that we need to accomplish all that you have planned and purposed for us. Father, we lift up um, uh, hope to you. Father, Lord, we lift up Carson to you. Lord, the circumstances that are going on in their life, Father, you know exactly what's happening, though we may not have all the details, Father. Lord, and you know exactly what needs to happen in each one of those circumstances. So, Father, we lift them up to you, Lord, and we ask nothing more but thy will be done. And Lord, uh, just as, as it's done, Father, we just anxiously await for you to work in their lives, Father. Lord, we anxiously await testimonies, Father, of your goodness, uh, of your loving kindness towards them, Father, working in their lives. Father, as they believe in you, Father, Lord, that you're working those things together for their good. Father, we do pray for patience. We do pray for comfort. Lord, if it be your will, we pray for healing, Father, in both their circumstances, Father, for what they need healing of. Lord, uh, just draw them close to you, Father. Lord, may out of the midst of their struggles in their life, Father, look to you. May you wrap your arms around them, Father, and embrace them, Lord, and take hold of them, Father. Lord, and work such great things, Lord, that may bring praise, honor, and glory to your name. Lord, just ask that you go with us, Lord, and uh, continue to lead God and direct us as we so uh, we know that you so faithfully will, Father. And as always, ask for those opportunities, Father, Lord, to share the goodness of your Son, Jesus Christ, with those that don't know Jesus. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.